guest here at calmclass.com. This website is dedicated to one thing, to be able to give you a different mindset. To be able to stay calm in tough times is by changing how you think, because when you change how you think, it changes how you live. My name is Dwight Bain. I'll be your host through most of these lessons, but I'm really glad that you found us. I'm really glad that you're taking time out to watch a lesson that will be life-changing. So do this. Take good notes. Download the study guides. Let these life application principles make your life a better place. And then would you let us know how this is helping you? My thanks to you for watching. My thanks to our incredible team for making it happen. But most of all, my thanks to God because he gives us principles that will change our life if we use them. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these friends and those that join us online at calmclass.com. Help each of us, God, help each of us in these days to let our light so shine before our culture that they can see the light in us is you, dear God. I pray that you would use this lesson to change hearts, but God, most of all, use it to change mine. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So in my pocket, in my pocket, I have the most valuable card that I carry everywhere I go, and I have the most dangerous card. Now, what's the most valuable card? I've talked about this before. You should get it. Yeah, most valuable card right there, my library card. Go every week, right? So what's the most dangerous card? Nope. Driver's license, why? Yes, driver's license, why? Because you are operating a deadly weapon. Because you're operating a deadly weapon, that's a wonderful guess. At least that's not it. <laughs> it's got all your information, everything. It's got contact information on it, yeah. But I said the most dangerous card. The government knows all about it. The government knows all about it. Yeah, and, and, and to all my friends at NSA who are listening, we just love you all so much. <laughs> John. Isn't it the most deadly thing that you do each day when you get behind the wheel of a Yeah, car? actually, the greatest likelihood, you know, we, we kind of tease and joke about life expectancy, but the greatest reason that we'll go to any of our, our you know, each other's funerals is a car accident. All right, but that's not the reason it's the most dangerous. You see, and nobody's even guessed. Is it because it can take it to the wrong places? Well, nice guess, it but no. It gives your age. You looked at the cover of the lesson, didn't you? It says age is a state of mind and anxiety is a multiplier. You know, we, we have a star student. You get the gold You get the gold star, Ruth, because you know, somebody, instead of just guessing all over the place, she went, oh, he's talking about age today. Because guess what I know about age? And, now, and, I, and I was actually waiting. I, I thought, Craig, somebody would guess the bad photograph. I mean, I, you know, it's like the, the most dangerous thing. It's like that doesn't even look like me. This guy just looks old and bald. Dear Jesus, help us. <laughs> the reason this is the most dangerous card is it has a chronological age. So it's not in your study guide, but right down somewhere, chronological age does not equal real age. True. That's the principle of our lesson today. Chronological age does not equal real age. Because real age has very little to do with the number that's on this card that says I can get cheap coffee or free coffee. I didn't even know this until somebody said, you don't just get discounted coffee at certain places, you get free coffee. It's like, oh, well, let me just go stand in line. <laughs> the age on this card is going to set me up for success or it's going to set me up for failure. Because if I believe chronological age, because haven't you met people who their driver's license said that they were old enough to know better and yet they weren't acting like they knew better? <laughs> Have you ever met somebody who's 60 years old but having a tantrum like a two-year-old? Yes. Ever seen that happen? It's regression. I mean, yeah, yeah, regression, that's it, Tim. In fact, remember, chronological age is not the same as real age. So, Naomi, I, I want you to help me with this because I want you to model, and everybody, I want you to do this. I want you to turn to at least two people around you and say, grow up. Just, Naomi, you go ahead and get okay. up. Just grow up. And I know the two people. I know the two people. Grow up. Would you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when I look at your chronological age, your driver's license age, not the same as your real age. 
a great example of that, a great example of that revitalized this particular product. Now, if you know the history of this product, uh, this is Nabisco, if you know the history of this product, you have to go back to the Great Depression. Because in the Great Depression, you know, we hear about, well, you know, the economy's bad. No, in the Great Depression, the economy was terrible. It was life or death dangerous. Unemployment was, was on average nationally 33, 34%. In some cities, unemployment was 50 to 60%. There was no food. There were no food banks. There were no government social programs to protect you. And people just barely had to hang on. It was bad. Men abandoned families. But in that time, big, you know, big companies, bakeries like Nabisco, they said, man, how are we going to get market share? Because people would buy saltines. And they said, you know, if we put butter into the regular recipe for saltines, if we just put butter in it, because one of the popular things of the 1920s was putting on the Ritz, right? It was a popular song. And they said, if we put butter into a saltine cracker, we could charge a dime more because even though people were dirt poor, it would make them feel a sense of hope. Even though we don't have a lot, we can have our sardines on a Ritz cracker, right? And so this brand was born... But by the 1980s, it had lost a great deal of luster because there were so many other competitors in the marketplace. And the Nabisco company very wisely went out and found someone who was as old as he thought he was, not chronological age. Andy Griffith from North Carolina, right? Mayberry. Mm, Mayberry. Mm, good. Mayberry. Mm, mm, good. And he would stand in front of the pantry and say, what are you... Folks, what are you hungry for when you don't know what you're hungry for? Why? And in his trustworthy North Carolina accident, why something on a crisp Ritz cracker? And the interesting thing about Andy is that most people who have a big, you know, shining star in Hollywood, they do one show and that's it. One and done, as they talk about. Because the Mayberry show, you know, did really well, the Andy Griffith show. But he reinvented himself with what show? Matlock. Matlock. <clears throat> and in fact, he was able to show that a guy who was older was actually smarter and cuter than the younger guys, right? <laughs> Being able to help you reinvent, and when, next time you see a Ritz cracker, I want you to remember, age, state of mind. And, and that state of mind, that state of mind, I want you to grow it up. Christian Attitude Life Management, Calm Class, is about growing you. And if you take a look on your Boy, study guide. Why don't you pass that box around? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to experiment. It's a great idea, Pat. It's a great idea. Speaking of the box, I want you, see you how to small experiment. It is. We're going to do a focus group, and so you're going to be able to experiment with a Ritz cracker. Just do not try to, don't try to whistle after eating crackers. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. We'll yeah, take, take one. one. Pass it around. Here you go. You really see how small this. a box is? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This is, this is the loaves and the fishes. The loaves you put on it. Yeah, yeah, do I have cheese spread? Cheese Whiz. Anybody have Cheese Whiz that you brought with you? <laughs> cheese Whiz. <laughs> Hey, you know what? If we had some peanut butter, we could have jerks. I yes. mean, I'm telling you. Put some peanut butter on that bad boy. Andrew Griffith was able to say, you know what? My career isn't over because I'm over 50. He reinvented. He reinvented, and you can reinvent too, because age is a state of mind. Chronological age is not the same as your real age. Here's the quote from Douglas MacArthur. You're as young as your faith. Boy, I like that. You're as old as your doubt. As young as your self-confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope, and look at that, as old as your despair. Man. So when I think about this, who said that? Douglas MacArthur, General Douglas MacArthur. It's right on the cover of your study guide. It's on the cover. So when I think about this, have you ever noticed, since age is state of mind, my wife, my wife took me to a place called Ikea. And, 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 and they trap you because it's a, if you've never been, I will spoil it for you, it's a maze. You, you go upstairs and then you're in this puzzle in this maze and you have to buy something to get out, I think is how it works, right? 
And so Sheila got the pillows that she wanted to get for something, and, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm just carrying stuff, right? That's the job of the husband. And then I saw this, and I went, oh, and, and I know that's why Ikea marches you through all that stuff. Because I said, finally Jared, I said, I, I, I have to have this. And Sheila said, why do you need that? And I said, well, because I might be an art student one day, and I might learn to draw. But I have to have this, because it will help me to illustrate so anyway, we had a, a, a discussion about how important my stuff was over her stuff. Since I was paying for both lots, Mike, I just decided I was going to go ahead and get myself, you know, this little guy. Because when you think of somebody old, do you think of this? And I'll hold it up for the calm class camera. When you think of somebody old, do you think of somebody who's stooped over? Here, stand sideways. Looking down. There you go. You stand side. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Knee replacements. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> or when you think of somebody, same age, same age. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now remember. You can be 70 years old or, young. or 70 years young. Okay, the only difference isn't the age on your driver's license. The difference is your age inside. I found a list of, of 100 people over the age of 60 who did phenomenal things. And I won't bore you with the list. Go do your own research because what you'll find is there's a lot of people that don't even hit their stride till they're 60. And it's like, man, Pat, I've got I've to up my game. You know, I mean, you know, people do these fantastic things 60 and beyond because something inside of them says, we're just getting started. Right. Moses was 85 when he started. Moses was 85. Good point. So when you start to think about this, it raises one of my favorite questions. If you did not know how old you were, how old would you be? If you didn't know how old you were, if you didn't have one of these to say, well, here's how old I am. If you didn't have one of these cards to tell you how old you were, how old would you be? And I thought, since it's one of my favorite questions, one of my favorite coaching questions, let's take a minute and talk about it. At your tables, many new people here, so please, 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 use your name and introduce yourself and if you don't know your name, pull out your driver's license so you can read it right off of your license, you see. Introduce yourself, learn names, learn names, learn names, and then answer the question. If you did not know how old you were, how old would you be? Go. If you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? That's not based on youth. That's based on a mental picture. Right. Because yeah. I'd like to be in my hundreds. I'd like to be someone that people go, you know what, that guy has got some things figured out. Because with age, you don't have to lose health. Barbara will teach you, just, just give her five minutes. She'll tell you what to eat and what to do, and she'll take all the fun out of your life. Just suck it right out. <laughs> if it tastes good, just get rid of it right there. Okay, so there's rule number one. That's not true, that is not true. Just having fun. Yeah, dirt is good. Uh, yeah, that's right. Just, just eat sticks. Many parts of a pine tree are edible, right? <laughs> when I think about aging, listen to this. This is from Samuel Ullman. Nobody merely grows old by living a certain number of years. We grow old when you give up your ideas. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up enthusiasm, that wrinkles the soul. Because I don't know what age, because God doesn't keep one of these on you. The government does. <laughs> John Hinkle was funny. He said, could you hold that up closer to the camera so I can get your, uh, your, your, your information off, you know, the uh, whole identity theft thing, right? God doesn't keep a number to say, here's how old you are. He says, you're my girl. You're my boy. You're my daughter. You're my son. And I've got great things planned for you. If you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be, is in part reflected by your energy. So in your study guide... <coughs> Because many people equate old age with no energy, and I've got more than 100 examples of cases where that was not true. To have continual renewal of energy, you must master your emotions. And the number one emotion to master is anxiety and fear. 
Because when people get old, comma, and scared, they stop trying. When people mature and they're not scared, they're willing to try great things. So when I take a look at this, there are three basic human emotions. Here they are. Number one is love. Love is a present emotion. It's God's design for daily living. Love is a present emotion. God's design for daily living. Anger is a past emotion. When you see somebody angry, resentful, agitated, usually they're reliving and remembering old stuff. Past emotion can cause guilt, depression, I should have. Thinking causes even more. But look at this. Fear is a future emotion. Fear causes anxiety and worry. And if you get caught up in the, oh no, what if thinking... What if they come? What if the government comes to shut things down? What if Social Security fails? What if the stock fund doesn't work? Oh, no, what if? Oh, no, what if? You'll create more anxiety. More anxiety you will feel every one of your years. I mean, when you think about anxiety and fear and age. Stress. Yeah, stress. The more people worry themselves and they sit and they watch the news shows about how bad it's going to be, that doesn't give you energy. <sighs> that sucks energy out of you. If you want more energy, you need to spend more time at the source, and I can promise you it's not a news channel. The goal of that news channel is not to make you feel better. It's to make their ratings better. And I can promise you, fear sells. There's a direct connection between the age that you feel and your anxiety level. That's why you have people that are 35 that want to give up on living because they feel like life is not, has no meaning, life has no value. You have multimillionaires like a, a, a Robin Williams who, I mean, lives in a $10 million house, but his life isn't worth living because of bad reviews and a lot of other things that happened and he just gave up. You say, how can that happen? Because you can be in your early 60s and feel like your life is over. You can be in your 30s and feel like your, your life is over. Or watch this. Or you can be in your 70s or 80s and feel like your life is just beginning. That's a mental. That's an attitudinal. And it comes back to those three great emotions. If I understand that perfect love, the Bible teaches, perfect love cast out fear. So if I'm able to say, I don't care about my age, I care about you. And you put me on this earth, at this time in history, in this family, in this part of the country, in this culture, in this language group, for a purpose. Please help me to live and understand and to know that purpose so I can live. And it doesn't matter about my age, it matters about you. Love, anger. So when you see people that are just habitually angry, their behavior is telling you they spend a lot of time dwelling on the past. They have a hard time forgiving. They have a hard time letting go. I talked to someone this week who'd been horribly abused as a child. And she said, it, I don't think about it. You know what? The people that did that were bad people. I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm a grown up and I'm going to go forward with my life. And I said, you don't need counseling. You're really at a healthy place. God bless you because that's what scripture teaches us. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You are not limited to be the abuse that happened to you in your past. You're not limited to that. You can be who God sees you as, and he doesn't have a driver's license. So as I take a look at this, one of the most common dynamics, one of the most common things that affects people that causes more anxiety is a fear of change. Fear of change. And, and so I've given you, in your study guide, these are the areas... These are the areas that seem to be most affected by change, fear of change. Uh, physical health, friends, schedule, emotions, spirituality, finances, probably the biggest one is people age. And when they get to retirement age or beyond, they worry. Uh, my wife and I are watching uh, a football game last night, which is funny because until our daughter went to that school, I did not know she knew what football was. <laughs> and, and certainly, but now all of a sudden she's a raving lunatic fan, wears all the stuff, has the big foam finger. It's like, what does the NCAA do to people? Is it like a drug that people take? 
I mean, I'm just standing as an outsider going, I, you know, Pat, you taught me this early on. Sports is about business and it's about marketplace positioning and there's a lot of things to it that have nothing to do with what's happening on the field. And I really paid attention to that and now I'm watching, you know, the people in my family are, you know, they're painting, you know, the face paint, you know, and it's like, man, <laughs> this is scary. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's happening. But I know this, people worry about money and we're watching a game and all of a sudden here's a celebrity who's on there and just a somber face. And he's looking right at the camera saying, Will you outlive your money? <laughs> and then it showed all these people who were having like a good life. It was really kind of, I mean, it's funny to me. Because it showed these people are having a good time, and all of a sudden you see this guy's face. Are you going to outlive your money? Will your retirement money last? And these people who are having a good time are like, oh, man. Dude, oh, man. <laughs> Let's just all drink the poison Kool-Aid and give up, right? <laughs> so when you take a look at the things, when you're worried and afraid of the fear of change, you worried about that for your family, for education, for habits, relationships, career, future goals. Here's what I know as people age. Here they go. Here's some facts. And particularly about change. Change is the most common element on earth. Change is like an atom. It's like a molecule. It's the most common factor in life. I want you to adopt an attitude of change. Because no matter how well you manage change, guess what? Buckle up, buttercup. More change is coming. So if you develop an attitude that says, we can get through this, we can get through this. The Bible teaches us to live in the day, to live in that moment, because there's no guarantee about tomorrow. And so as we're able to embrace that, no matter how well I manage change, more change is coming. Man, I've got my act together today. It won't last. <laughs> Successful people are constantly changing key areas of their life. And next to that, would you write the word reinvention? Just write it in your study guide, reinvention. Because reinvention is to be able to say, you know what? God, I know you have a purpose and I know you have a plan. And as I take a look at this, change is an essential part of the Christian life. Change is the mission of this group of people in Orlando. If you're watching at calmclass.com, there's a group of people in Orlando, you know, just kind of clap so the people online can hear you. So they know how to <laughs> So there's a group of people in Orlando and we meet together to get calm. Christian attitude and life management. Oh, that's a good idea, Jay. Christian attitude and life management. And the mission of Christian attitude and life management comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul's writing this, and he's going through the toughest of life circumstances. Listen, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, and circle it in your notes, in your study guide, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Rather, we renounce secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception. We don't distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And then jump down to verse 18, or verse 8, I'm sorry. We are hard-pressed on every side, underline it, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but we are not destroyed. Therefore, circle it again. We do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed. How often? Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. And so every day, as you're able to say, God, give me energy for the day. Now all of a sudden, it's not about an age on a driver's license. It's about saying, what is your purpose for me today, God? <laughs> to move you forward, and I shared some things in a study guide from my own personal journal because I learned after a heart attack that <clears throat> journaling and being able to take anxieties or fears or doubts or regrets and writing things down helps you to sort through it. It may sound simple, it is so powerful I can't describe it to you. I mean, Pat, I remember I was approached and I was in my 30s and I was approached by the Kellogg Foundation and they said, I don't even know how I, I got nominated for this, they said, we've seen your work and we'd like you to apply for a Kellogg fellowship. It was a 30-page application, and it was two years. They pay all of your expenses, all of your bills, and they pay you, I think it was $75,000 a year. You spent, you know, a month at the White House, a month at the headquarters of every major place in North America. And, and, and I looked at it, and I thought, you know, okay, what would this do? And I'm in my 30s, right? And, 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 and they said, you know, here's what the typical Kellogg Fellowship person looks like. And, and Don, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say like you. I got scared. Yeah, really. That, well, that's how you, I guess you get picked, but I got scared, and I never sent the application back. Because I was so afraid of what that would mean. 
Because if you're studying at the White House for a month and you're studying at IBM for a month and you're studying at Apple for a month, they pay all your expenses. And I thought, you know, I mean, we have young children. What will that do to my family? And instead of even trying, I didn't even show up. So here's a principle. If you're afraid to try, life will pass you by. If you're afraid to try, life will pass you by. Yeah, write it down. Because so much of aging is tied to a mental picture of anxiety, and I was afraid to try. And I don't know, Pat, who got that Kellogg Fellowship. You know, they looked at, you know, 100 people, they'd take 20. I don't know who got it, but it wasn't me because I was afraid to show up. That was before I knew you. See, if I had known you, that would have been the secret. That would have been the secret. I'd have been out there swinging for the fence, baby, swinging for the fence. Who was president? I, uh, who was president that was... Uh, Reagan, Clinton. Uh, no, no, that would have been Clinton. It would have been either Clinton or, it would, no, it would have been Reagan's second term. It was Reagan's second term. Yeah. Reagan's second term. You could have hung out with Clinton. Yeah, that's right. I would have been there during the Clinton thing, too. All right, let me jump back into the lesson. Just... <laughs> We'd have been buds. I, I maybe could have helped prevent some problems in his life, right? <laughs> I think I'm the wrong gender to have caught his attention, I, I'm thinking. So as I take a look at this, see, back in the scripture, verse 8. We're hard-pressed on every side, we're not crushed, we're perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Therefore, we don't lose heart. That's where your aging comes from. It comes from a mental picture, it comes from heart. That's why there are 80-year-olds with enthusiasm and energy. How many of you in this room right now are 80 or above? Raise your hands. 80 or above. Look at this, look at this. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey. Because there are 20-year-olds that have given up on life and 80-year-olds that are just getting started. That's a mental picture. How do you do it? Number one, be painfully honest. That's the journaling. Because I had to journal out my regrets over some things, some things I missed. Some things I missed. Be painfully honest in your journaling. Look back. Look back so you can learn from it, but then look back to move forward. And then build balance in your life. What does that mean? It means eat broccoli and drink smoothies, give up soda, get some balance in your life. And literally, single greatest thing you can do for your health, Dr. Oz says, get enough sleep. Or, or Pat, to quote what you said, eight, eight hours of sleep, you know, for beauty rest, nine hours if you're ugly. Eight hours of beauty rest, nine hours if you're ugly. You build balance into your life. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of Caleb. You want to show someone who was able to overcome age with attitude? No anxiety whatsoever. Okay, it's in your study guide. This is from Joshua chapter 14. Caleb, to give you a back history, Caleb was one of only two people that had lived in Egypt and also lived in the promised land. One of two, Joshua being the other. Joshua was the youngest serving Moses. Caleb, one of the oldest serving Moses. And... And listen to what he wrote. Now then, just as the Lord promised, God has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the desert, children of Israel. So here I am today, I'm 85 years old. He was 40 when they left Egypt. He'd lived in Egypt 40 years. He said, I'm 85 years old today, exclamation point. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go to battle now as I was then. It's like, you know, I will throw down. I mean, he was, he was tough. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. So Hebron, where the city of Jerusalem is, Hebron has belonged to Caleb ever since. Why? Because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. He said, I'm 85 today. I'm just as strong as I was at 45. Get out of my way. Wouldn't that be incredible? To be around people in their 70s or 80s or 90s who said, I'm just as strong today as I was then. What that means is he'd eaten a share of broccoli, Barbara. Okay, I'm coming back to you. <laughs> he took care of himself. He said, I'm just as strong today. Remember, who was it? Jack, Jack, Jack? Yeah, what was it? The guy that was a workout guy? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, he was just, I mean, he would work out and strong and healthy, right? Being able to drop down, do 100 push-ups. Okay. Caleb said, it's not about age, it's about attitude. No fear. Remember, he was championing for the opportunity to go fight against giants and, and warriors. And he said, bring it. So when we start to look at and where did he get that kind of confidence? It says right there, from the Lord. 
So that's why, Jay, when we were talking earlier about what the government may do to religious freedom, bring it. If you know what you believe, you don't have to be afraid. If you know what you believe, it doesn't matter if you're 16 or 60. If you know what you believe, you don't have to be afraid. How do we do that? Number one, age is a state of mind, but it takes time to develop you. Yes, age is a state of mind, but it takes time to develop you. And the single greatest thing you can do to develop you, reading. Reading. And then beyond reading, it's to find groups of people like this to share what you read, to share what you learned. My favorite thing, I do it five times a day on social media, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, on, on my blog. Five times a day, I share, here's what I've read. Here's something that I saw. Here's something that I learned. Because I know that as I share it with you, it, it helps me. And maybe it'll help you. I hope so. And being able to share, here's what I learned, because it takes time to develop you. It takes time to develop me. And I want you to be well beyond in wisdom, well beyond your chronological age. You're not limited. You're not limited to your chronological age. You understand? You could be 500 years old in wisdom. You just have to read, and you have to share what you learned, and you have to be around wise people. You know, you've heard Charles Tremendous Jones who said, "In five years, you will be the sum total of the books you've read, the people you hang out with. That's it. And you're hanging out with some pretty good people. Calm, class. Way to go. Number two, attitude is the key to what you will see." Attitude is the key to what you will see. Attitude really is everything. Number three is acceptance of life as a process instead of life as an event. Life is a journey. It's not a single event. So if you have a bad day, should you give up? No. Suicide, the tenth leading cause of death in the United States, because so many people, something bad happens, and they give up instead of saying, I'm going to get up. You see the difference? Life knocks you down. Bam. Okay? While you're down, you can give up, or you can say, shake it off. I'm going to get up. <laughs> give up or get up. That's your choice, and that is based on acceptance of life as a process instead of life as an event. Be aware of your atmosphere and your environment. The things you watch on television, the music that you listen to, the things that are around you in your environment, shapes your thinking. It shapes your mood. Do not sit and listen to junk stuff on TV and not think that junk stuff is in your head. It sticks. Oh yeah, or if you listen to the new G106.3, now the fifth most popular radio station in Orlando, which is pretty cool because it's not even three months old. Fifth most popular radio station in Orlando, and it's not even a couple of months old, because G106.3 is just about an inspiration. It's just about 24 hours a day of urban gospel. Jesus is bigger than you thought he was. Exciting music. But it ties back into, and so many of the songs are about, hey, a testimony. Life was hard, but my God is bigger, right? Seeing life as a process instead of a single event. Being aware of your atmosphere and environment. Acquaintances will strengthen you or weaken you, so choose wisely. Choose wisely. Number six, action. You have to get moving. If you want more energy, if you want your age to not be a factor, you've got to get moving. So right there where you're sitting, just put your, put your study guide down and just, and just do some of this. Do some of this. All right? Do some of this. Yeah. Get in the moving. Get in the moving. Yeah, that's right. You can throw those hands up. You can throw those. Throw them up in the air and just praise them like you do not even care. I mean, I am here. Loud and proud. And here's the most amazing thing. is you get your heart rate going, guess what happens? You get going, and you feel stronger, and you feel healthier, and you're breathing, and you're alive. And you're not afraid anymore. You have to have action. Listen to the word. E, motion, and then scratch out the E. All right? So you put it down. Put E, motion, and then scratch out the E. What do you have? Motion, action, Movement, involvement, that will keep you alive. That will keep you motivated. Number seven, always learning, always growing, always planning for a great future. How often should we do that? Always. Always. You want to suck every bit of life out of every day? Planning, growing. And you have to take anxiety out of that. You have to take fear out of that. Because if you're fearful and anxious and afraid, then you're thinking, 
you know, we're all going to die. Maybe some of you have seen the documentary on the South, living in the South, I guess in the 1970s. It was a documentary called Hee Haw. Yeah, and there was this song, <laughs> Gloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. Sing it with me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> But they were these guys, if you know Roy the sketch Clark. from the comedy show, they would sit around and cry in their beer about how bad their life was, and their, you know, my wife left with my best friend, and I sure do miss him, and I, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> but being able to look at this, always learning, always growing, planning for a great future. If you're gloom and doom, there's no future because you're dead right now. And you give up. Number eight, acquire all the facts. Acquire all the facts. For instance, you heard about the guy who bought a mood ring for his wife. He said when she's in a good mood, it turns green. When she's in a bad mood, it leaves a red mark right here on my forehead. <laughs> mood ring. So you get all the facts. And, you know, it's going to protect your forehead. <laughs> Number nine. You want to be able to protect this level of energy no matter your age. All of you, all the time. All of you, all the time. Every day to be able to show up energized. Every day at work. Every day. Well, Dwight, what if they fire me? Every day. All of you, all the time. Don't live in fear. So you show up even if you're fired? You show up even if you're fired. <laughs> you know what? There have been enough people that, that they had a bad boss, a toxic work environment, and, and, and you know, there's people who have bad attitudes and are firing everybody. You're fired, you're fired, you're fired. And they show back up, and there are plenty of stories of people that showed back up and got rehired because they said, you're just having a bad day, buddy. All right, being able, all of you, all the time, showing up 100%. And then what they do in sports? And then what we want our magic to do? Or our new Orlando City, you know, soccer? I mean, you know, show up with all of you all the time. That's kind of, uh, I think, why there's a coach in, in a part of our state that will be unemployed tomorrow because I'm not sure everybody showed up. All of you, all the time. Well, Dwight, I just want to take a couple of years off. Well, you can do that, but guess what, hap guess what happens to your energy? That's why, you know, I've, I've heard, Jared, that the definition of retirement is, is, you know, I got tired, and then I got tired again, so I'm retired, and so I just, I'll just stop now. All of you, all the time, is saying, I'm going to bring my best every day, because is there any guarantee you get tomorrow? Not the last time I checked. Awe. Awe. To be in awe of the greatness of God. <laughs> to be in awe of the greatness of God. I'm coming up on the eighth anniversary of my third birthday. Okay, first birthday, August the 2nd. <coughs> Second birthday, that's the day I was chronologically born. Second birthday, November 13th. It's the day I was born again, accepted Christ as my Savior. This time of year has great meaning to me because October the 28th, God allowed me to survive a heart attack, and it's my third birthday. God gives second chances. Yeah. God gives second chances. And I am in awe of how good God is to be able to say, hey, let's get your life back in balance. I'm not done with you yet. Because for months after the heart attack, you go into a clinical depression. And it was discouraging, and it was hard. And I went to counseling to try to figure out, why am I so scared, and why do I feel like my life is over? Because that season of life, and riding roller coasters and jumping out of helicopters with law enforcement and the Army, that season of life was over. And you have to grieve that. I had to, I had to go through the grief part to be able to see this next chapter, not over. It's just getting started. But that, that's a choice. That's an attitude. That's a mindset. And when you're able to say, I am in awe of you, Lord God, wow, you gave me another chance. I am in awe of you. When you're in awe of God and you bring all of you and you use these principles, this doesn't matter. You can throw it away. Because it's not your age anymore. It's just a simple reflection of how many years you've lived in the goodness and the glory of God to point other people. To point other people. Hey, 
That's why I believe. Let's pray that we do. Father, thank you for these friends. Those that watch online, help each of us to bring all of us every day. And may our time in calm class challenge us to do it. In Christ's holy name, amen. Hi, Dwight Bain here. And I want to tell you about calmclass.com. The website that you came to is actually a teaching lesson that we record in Orlando, Florida, every single week. You can actually come be part of the live audience. If you're in Florida, maybe you're visiting the Orlando area, come check us out. We meet at 3000 South John Young Parkway. It's on the campus of First Baptist Orlando, which is actually a pretty large place. So what you're looking for is a large building by a lake. It's a big three-story building called Faith Hall. And we're in Faith Hall upstairs in room 301. But if you don't get a chance to come live to the presentation in Orlando, then if these lessons about making your life work better, to get past frustration in relationships, maybe frustrations on the job, maybe you're just kind of feeling beat up about what you believe. If you enjoy these lessons, would you do me a favor? Would you tell a friend? Because by your experience of telling other people, hey, this website helped me, these lessons helped me. When you're doing that, you're helping take the message that we teach in Orlando and to be able to spread that to the entire world. And thanks.